Good afternoon, David here. I just want to do a little comparison of the Budiagris nabnandii palm, the mule palm, which is a intergenetic hybrid cross between the mother plant of Butia capitata, commonly known as the pindo palm, and Cyagris romanzafianum, the queen palm. Uh, these are two 30 gallon mule palms. We carry 30s, 15s, and 7s and larger field grown ones, a variety of four sizes at Earthworks. But uh, I'm not sure if anyone ever notices this, and I've known about this for years, but they're both mule palms, they're hybrids, they're cross, but if you notice, the petioles and leaf bases on this are like a burgundy chocolate color, which I would say takes after the ancestry of the mother, the pindo. And then this one, you can see is green, almost matching the leaflets, which would take after the queen palm. So they're both mules, but hence we have a chocolate one and a green one, which is really unique. I have uh, one of each color in my collection, but it's something I wanted to highlight um, just for the diversity of, uh, of hybrid mule palm. Then I want to walk over and show you the inflorescence. Now, this being a mule palm, is, uh, it's a hybrid and it's sterile. The flower and inflorescence may produce seed, but they'll abort and they just will not generate, uh, germinate. So they have to be hand pollinated. A friend of mine, Richard Lindbergh, uh, has a nice little collective hobby where he actually produces mule palms and super mule palms and just, he's really into the hybrids. But I wanted to show you, here's what I would call the chocolate variety. And there's a nice yellow inflorescence that has uh, opened up the other day here flower stalks on this side and this is the largest size mule palm we have it's about 15 feet overall and it's a ball and burlap meaning it's grown in the ground in a tree farm but look at that beautiful flower and all palms anybody that uh, is wondering I get qu questioned about this all the time uh, what can I do to stop the mess or the berries I don't really consider it a mess you can cut this off and the bract which is the shell before the uh, pot opens up. You can cut these off at this stage. Of course, this is not going to go to seed. Uh, it's sterile, but for any palm, once the uh, inflorescence opens up and the bracts separate, you can just cut them right off. And it's low maintenance. They only do it one time a year. It's just the palm uh, showing itself to reproduce and keep the generations going on. And then I wanted to walk up to the front of the nursery and show you the other mule palm that has a ruby red inflorescence. So you can see the different and genetic strains coming out and being exhibited between the two palms even though they're classified as a mule palm, the same palm. Walking up here, this is our the other half of the mule palm, that's a queen palm. And it's the pollen that's taken male pollen from the queen palm and it's pollinated the female ovaries on the pindo palm and that's what produces the seedling of a mule palm and there'll be some variations you'll have like I said the chocolate and the green that I showed you in the back and you'll have more of an upright configuration with the leaves and then some will be more recurving now the one we just showed in the back with the creamy yellow inflorescence had a more upright silhouette whereas this one they recurve so there's a lot of variations because the chromosomes may show more from one to the other but uh, yeah, I noticed this this morning. It's a ruby red. It's right up here. So you can see the difference. Same palm, yellow inflorescence, red inflorescence. And then I showed you the green and the chocolate trunk. So it just shows you the variables and hybrids. That's a beautiful inflorescence. I just wanted to do a follow-up on my previous video uh, on the two leaf flushes on the Encephalartus ferox and Encephalartus gratus. I just didn't mention that when the Encephalartus ferox gets to its reproductive age, it produces one of the most beautiful Encephalartus cones. It's a kind of ruby red, coral red, beautiful, and they also call it the holly leaf cycad because it resembles a holly leaf with the red, kind of like Christmas time, uh, and also correct the IUCN list of Endangered Species stands for International Union of Conservation for Nature. So that's all. Uh, like us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 
and anyone would like to give us a feedback review on any part of the company or any video, we would appreciate the feedback too. And thank you. Stay tuned for more videos and have a wonderful day.